BenQ latest flagship SW321C packs a lot of features. However, there are two features of this display that is totally unique to any hardware calibrated display manufacturers out there. One of them is the new matte anti-reflective coating that when you're editing a photo, it's like you're looking at a matte print. Secondly, it's a new hardware color mode called Paper Color Sync. When you set your display to that color mode, what it will do is change the white point of display from the D65 that you're editing on to D50. When you do that, it's going to closely match the white point of the paper that you're printing out from your inkjet printer. This way, you can actually do soft proofing at a hardware level on this display and get results that matches with your printer or coming out from your printer, saving time and money in the long run. So what I'm going to do in this video is review those two features in concert and tell you what I think about them using those features for the past four weeks, where I think that feature can go, and if I think of it as a game changer or not. I'm Art Suan Sang, BenQ Ambassador. Let's get started. Before we start, please subscribe if you are new and hit on the notification bell to be updated every time I upload a new video. First, let's talk about my setup. What I have done here is a full end-to-end -end color management workflow. That means that the screen, this display, has been calibrated using the X-Rite i1 Display Pro along with Palette Master Element to make sure that I'm getting good result when I'm editing my photo. Secondly, for all the prints that I've done, I actually use the X-Rite i1 Studio to do print profiling. This way, I guarantee that the colors or the print that are coming out from my printer matches really closely what I'm seeing on my screen. It helps when you do a full end-to-end -end color management workflow. Thirdly, what I have here is the BenQ SW321C. What you don't see here in this setup is the Epson printer. And although BenQ only support the Epson P600 and the Canon PIXMA Pro 10 at the moment, what I have actually done is print my images on the Epson P800. P600, P800, those are two different models. However, they still use the same set of inks. The only difference is that the P800 can print up to 17 inch, where the 600 can only go up to 13 inch. So I'm winging it a little bit there, but that's also the reason why I'm doing the whole color management end-to-end -end control. And lastly, what I have set up right here, this is a GTI light box. This is graphic technology ink. This is their PDV3E. There are two D50 bulbs in here that I'm using to do print proofing. And a couple of disclaimers that I need to share with you before I start this video is that this has been a very difficult video to reproduce visually on video for you guys. And it's hard because my studio setup right now is being lit by two of these really bright LED daylight sources, D65. This screen right now, when I do paper color sync, it's gonna change to D50. This is supposed to be D50 and is supposed to match. However, there is one thing that we need to notice that this is a backlit LED light source. So the camera is going to register this differently than a reflective light source. Not only that, but these are using two fluorescence bulbs that palpitates at 60 hertz. That means that they are flashing on and off 60 times per second, changing the way how the camera is seeing everything. So I'm going to try my best, but note that when I do tell you that the color matches, when I'm printing in my environment, when I'm doing testing visually, the color do genuinely match or come really close to what I'm seeing on the display. Now let's address paper color sync. So I mentioned a paper color sync is a color mode on the display that you can go set and you can totally do that and use it right away. However, for the best result, there is a companion software that you need to install on your computer too. And what that companion software does is that it allows you to configure a lot of granular details of paper color sync. Number one being what color space are you tagging your photo with? Whether it's sRGB or Adobe RGB, it's gonna ask you that question. You can also have it do auto detect and that's one way of going about it. But in general, you want to make sure that you pick the color space first. Secondly, you have to choose the printer you're printing with. In this case, the two officially supported printer model is the Epson P600 and the Canon PIXMA Pro 10. Again, like I mentioned earlier, I've also breaking the rules a little bit by printing on an Epson P800. But knowing that those two are using the same set of inks, you could probably make a reasonable assumption that if you have another printer model that is using a same similar set of inks, that it will work the same way too. Lastly, the support. The paper support for those printers is somewhat limited right now, but there's something really unique about them. But first of all, let's talk about the paper first. On the Epson P600, BenQ support Velvet Fine Art and Premium Photo Semi-Gloss. So those are the two papers they support at the moment. 
On the Canon PIXMA Pro 10, there are two papers that are supported right now. One of them is Photo Paper Pro Luster, and secondly is the Photo Plus Semi Gloss. Those are the two papers that are being supported for each of these printer manufacturers or these printers models at the moment. In the future, I hope that BenQ does go in and expand to more paper support, number one, and secondly, also more printer support, but I'm not really sure where this is going to go. On a Canon printer, if you look at a paper type that are supported, both of those papers use photo black ink, so that doesn't really do us a lot. However, because I also have an Epson, and for the paper type that are supported on the Epson printer in this case, one of them is Velvet Fine Art, which uses a matte black ink, and the other one is Premium Photo Semi Gloss, which uses a photo black ink. So if you have these two side by side, we can make a reasonable assumption that if you're printing on any other paper by any other manufacturer, for that matter, if you're using a matte black ink, we could probably choose Velvet Fine Art and get a result that looks close to what we're seeing in the print and on the screen. Same thing with the photo black ink. If you're printing anything using a photo black ink, again, choosing premium photo semi-gloss will probably yield a result that looks very similar to what we're seeing on the screen. So in my testing, what I have done is actually printed on the actual supported paper, in this case, Velvet Fine Art and Semi Gloss. But I've also tested on a few different paper from Canceln Infinity as well. And when we get to that, with those specific settings tuned with Paper Color Sync using the software to tune the display, I will make a mention of this is, for example, Canceln Infinity and see how they look and if they look close to what we're seeing on the screen or not. Next up, you will see a series of images in a slideshow format comparing BenQ Paper Color Sync to the respective paper format. These will be of all the same photos. This way you can get a heads up view and see very quickly how the BenQ screen or the new BenQ Paper Color Sync compares to the printout between these two different paper types. Quick disclaimer, what you will see next are a series of still images that have been minimally processed in Lightroom to mimic what I've seen during my testing.
A few more things to note about Paper Color Sync is that if you run your computer in multiple display mode, for instance, I have the SW321C and SW320 hooked up to my system. When you try to launch Paper Color Sync, it won't launch, it will refuse. So in this case, what I have to do is pull out or disconnect my SW321C before I can get Paper Color Sync to launch. A slight minor inconvenience because I have to grab behind a computer and really pull the cord out to disconnect it. So that's one of the minor quirks that I found out. The other thing too with Paper Color Sync is that when you put your display into Paper Color Sync mode using the software, it will change your system display profile to a generic sRGB. The thing is that when you change it back to your calibrated mode, in this case I would change it to calibration one slot, it doesn't change the ICC profile back. So I have to go in and manually choose the ICC profile that I want to use with my display. Like I said, these are minor inconvenience and I hope that in the future BenQ will upgrade their software to make this process, make this transition a lot more seamless. Overall, I think that Paper Color Sync has the potential and is already a game changer for photographers, especially if you're doing printing in-house or in-studio. If you have an inkjet printer in your studio, it is really a no-brainer. It's really a great display for that. The only thing that I hope is that BenQ go in and expand the printer support and also the paper support in the future. This way, if you have another printer that's currently the line on market, you will get more support for that. One thing to keep in mind too is that though the print comes really close, we have to understand that the display can show billions of colors while the print is going to be able to show much less colors. The other thing too is the physics behind the whole thing. The display is a backlit source versus a print that is a reflective light source. We're going to get really close, but to get everything to match exactly on all the aspect to get a 100% exact match is going to be rather difficult. What BenQ have done so far and what I have seen is absolutely fantastic. Like I said before in my introduction, no other display manufacturers right now that makes hardware calibrated display has these technology in combination working in concert together. Paper Color Sync and the new matte anti-reflective coating on the SW321C is a big game changer. I hope that you find this video helpful and learn something new along the way. If you have any questions about the features I cover in this video, please feel free to leave in the comment section below. Please give this video a like, subscribe to my channel if you are new, hit on the notification bell so you'll be updated every time I upload a new video, and until next time, art is right.